And just a reminder that uh, what we are doing, of what we are doing is the Sankofa for Political Studies and the theme for this year's uh, lesson is Maratian Anthropology. So we've seen different aspects of the Maratian Anthropology and today we are delving into the sociality of the human person, sociality of the human and uh, no other person uh, than our uh, able uh, lecturer, uh, Reverend Father Felix Olamide uh, Tunde, going to take us on this uh, particular uh, lecture. So the lecture is recorded, and uh, as we know, there is a little bit of problem with the a technical problem with the uh, with the computer. So he's going to be presenting from the phone, from his phone. But he has the, the, the what's it called now, the, the notes to present with. And later, the PowerPoint will be ready and made available on the website for us to consult. So, uh, Father Felix, the table and uh, everything is yours now to, to, to present. Thank you very much for your availability. Okay, thank you everyone for your patience and uh, good evening once again. And like rightly said, but uh, the general coordinator will be looking at the sociality of humans. The last part of the chapter six of um, the book we have been journeying with. But before then, I would like to give a short recap of uh, what has been said before for the benefits of some of us who have forgotten, and for the benefits of us who have not followed consistently. So this is the last part of our Mahatian anthropology, the chapter six of Mahat, the ideal moral principle in ancient Egypt by Maulena Karenga. So what have we discussed so far? Like I said, for the benefit of some of us who couldn't follow uh, systematically, and for those who have forgotten, we discussed the following. One, that Mahatian anthropology is the same as Mahatian ethics. Why? Because every ethics presupposes and contains a definite philosophical anthropology, which means a concept of human person centered on the way of life with the self, the way of life with the other, and the way of life with the supreme divine being. Two, that this Mahatana anthropology, as we said, is centered or is contained in ancient Egypt, according to the book we have been looking for or looking at. Three, that the Mahatana anthropology in ancient Egypt evolves in the texts as a philosophical portrait by, of the king and later develops into a basic way of viewing humans in general. That is, that, uh, that is from the philosophical portrait of the divine ruler to a moral anthropological understanding of the ordinary person. Four, that the idea of, that the idea of an interest in philosophical anthropology are questions of ontology and theology. But in this case, it is more implicit in the classical Mahatian tradition that is, it is not well written, but in it, we can find uh, these, these questions of uh, theology and ontology, which we will meet some of them in our discussions shortly. And five, as a way of interpreting this uh, Mahatian anthropology, for the past weeks and months, the following were discussed as a practical way of understanding them. Apart from the knowledge and introduction of, the, of Mahat, we talked about the divine image, which was pre prepared and uh, lectured by Father Isaac Oko Osirumore. We talked about the perfectibility of humans given by Father Aliakwe Odio. Continued also on that uh, with the teachability of humans and free will of humans by Father Aneke John Paul Chinon. So, and finally, the last part, the sociality of humans will be presented by me, Felix Olamide. 
So this uh, sociality of humans, what is it? Let's quickly say that they are divided into two parts, according to Karenga in his book. The first part, relation, relationality and practice, and the last part, life affirming topology. And for the purpose of our discussion today, we will be looking at the relationality and practice. So in what does this sociality of humans more in relationality and practice consist? For Karenga, it means identity, dignity, and other basic human values that are rooted in and reflective of one's place, role, and responsibility in society or community. Meaning that relationality and practice as way of socializing of humans is the way in which human expresses their identity, who they are, their dignity, what they represent, and other basic human values, rights, and other things that are rooted, these things are rooted in man, and they are reflective of one's place, role, and responsibility in society or community. Karenga went further to say that this means, this relationality and practice means that in the ancient Egypt and in the society, is his character. That is, he or she is that practice in, relation, uh, in relationship practice in relationship as a word, practice hyphen in hyphen the relationship. That means one word, you, are, you practice in relationship as the result of the character. We have talked about character, Mahatian character, what it means, you know. This is not to praise egoism or individualism, but to define relational obligations, the honoring of which gives one both our identity and sense of worth. According to Karenga, what this means is that relationality and practice that we have defined as identity and dignity that shows one's place role can only be if this relation, uh, relational, uh, relationality is seen as a relational obligation that honors one's identity and sense of worth. That makes one to see his or identity and sense of worth. This means that sociality that this means that what Karenga means is sociality and not individuality. What is the focus here is sociality and not individuality. Though one cannot socialize without been individual, that will be one of the criticism, which is very correct if you are to look at it that way. However, to socialize without individuality will not bring that uniqueness. So the individuality is, is there. But individuality is geared towards society and God and the other. So your obligation, according to Karenga, is the right of the other, while your right also is the obligation of the other. That is my own uh, interpretation because individuality for him is geared towards, uh, towards the society, towards the other person and towards God. That means you are in relation to someone, to some persons. And if this relation, the relationship is obligatory, it means that that obligation that you have is to protect the right of the other person, to the right of those living in the society. And your own right now is, to, is the obligation of those people. Those people have the obligation, they are obligated as well to protect your own right. And this is a, a kind of, what we call uh, reciprocity in the uh, anthropology of humans. In a, in a nutshell, this is ethics, way of life. The relationship, the relationality and practice is centered on acting 
doing good that cultivates and reaffirms the, the, the worth of the character of man. I repeat that. This relationality, according to Karenga and Pratis, is centered on acting, doing good, that cultivates and reaffirms uh, the worthness of character. Should not forget that the African morality is a morality of conduct, not of being. A morality of conduct and not a morality of being. That is, a person is what he is because of what he does. Okay, you are because you do. And not that, and not what it does. Sorry, I take that again. And it is not what he does that makes him who he is. So a person is what he is because of what he does and not what he does that makes him who he is. Morality of conduct by Karenga stresses on the practice. So like the first part we are looking at, the practice, the relationality in practice shows the essence of what you do. So what you do, what do you, what do you do and why do you do it? For what purpose are those actions for? The purpose of every human action, according to the ancient Egyptians, is to be in relation with others, to be in relation with the society and to be in relation with the Supreme Being. That's why I said, what you have, what will define, define who you are and what you are is what you do. This is clearly uh, in contrast with uh, the major streams of thought of uh, modern European uh, philosophy, you know, that uh, also places being and the question of being, the existence of being before you act and evaluate it in that. But if we look at it clear, uh, uh, critically, According to Karenga, there is no separation between conduct and character. If he is saying a person is what he does, that makes him what he is, he is not saying that, that's why I put that uh, uh, statement like maybe action precedes existence. For him or for the ancient Egyptians, no one does not predict, uh, uh, precede the other. You do because you have. And you can also reverse it that you have because you do, because whatever you do, you are doing it as an existence being who is doing it in relation to another being that is existent. And the same thing, you, are, you exist in order to act towards and for a particular uh, person, for a particular being, for the other, for the society. So there is no separation between conduct and character. And by character, we mean Mahatian character. Mahatian character that sees it as the ideal place of what man becomes. And this character as a person in the ancient Egyptians, you must speak it like, you, it's what you utter out. It is, a, it is a life, it is a philosophy, it is a whole being in itself. You must practice it. You must become it. You have my heart in the ancient uh, Egyptian uh, philosophy or anthropology, Mahatian anthropology. When we talk of Mahatian anthropology, of course, we are referring to Egyptian anthropology as the previous authors and, sp and previous speakers have clearly uh, talked about, about this topic. So in synthesis, I will say that this first part of the sociality of humans, according to Karenga, points out the following. One, that it is the philosophy of society. And by society, we mean philosophy of persons, of community. Two, that this particular society was in ancient Egypt, the locus of meaning the context in which most significant human values are defined and achieved. Two or three, that this same society was the center of the most important relationships and most relevant moral practices, which were rooted in those relationships, in those relationships. You know, if it is the philosophy of society, you are what you do 
and what you do makes you who you are. If it is in uh, synthony, if it is in synthony with the other persons, if it is in synthony uh, with the good of the others, with the good of the society. And finally, that the Mahatian society was not simply human construction. Because at times, um, we see Mahat as just deification of the supreme being. Not only a uh, Mahatian society was not in ancient Egypt, a simply human construction, but also participants, participants in the divine and cosmic ideal and practice of Mahat. I take that again. Society as the locus of meaning, society as the center where this important relationship are lived, and the Mahatian society, not just as human construction, but also a society that participates in the divine and cosmic ideal of the moral practice of Mahat. In the next class, we shall look at life affirming anthropology and how it buttress or buttresses the, uh, the point of the sociality of humans. Because like I said, the sociality of humans is divided into those two parts, the relationality and practice and life as um, life affirming anthropology. If society is what gives us who we are through the conduct we do, then, and where we live and have life, this life must affirm, and it must become the anthropology. That means the concept of persons, their way of life in ethics, in metaphysics, in the way they speak, in the epistemology of the people, in religion, the, this society must be life affirming. This, concept of my person must be life affirming. That is what we will look at in the next class. And uh, I say thank you and sorry again for all these inconsistencies of the uh, internet and technical difficulties. We hope it, uh, it's rectified soon. And in the next class, we have a better flow of the thoughts. So now I think uh, questions or clarifications as well as contributions. Uh, might be welcome as the moderator takes over. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for that well explained uh, concepts of the sociality of the human person. For those who are just coming in, today we uh, looked into the sociality of the humans following the Martian anthropology. And the Martian anthropology is the reality, the way, the perspective, the paradigm of the ancient Egyptians. And mind you, the ancient Egyptians were Africans, just like you and myself. So we are talking about the heritage and the uh, and what uh, the contribution our forefathers have left to, to humanity. And that is what we are trying to learn, to go back to as a uh, people of this particular uh, descent. So, uh, we just, uh, our lecturer for today has just finished his lecture, and now it is time for questions and clarifications, and also if there are any contributions, are all welcome. So the floor is ours for us to make uh, contributions and questions. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Yeah, the mic is yours. You can... You can ask us quite your question. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Father Felix. I listened to your, do I, uh, because I was having network connection uh, problem, so I actually connected late, so, but I at least to, to some extent, I listened to the lecture and it was so rich, but there is a point in which I want to be clarified on it, uh, I, I heard him mention that uh, uh, in the ancient Egypt, the your character and what you do, your character and what one one does, uh, you can equate your character with uh, uh, with what one does. So, but in judging this, how can you, for example, I'm a person. I'm just seeing somebody today. 
and the person is behaving in this way. So I, uh, am I uh, to use that act or that behavior to, to uh, uh, generalize or conclude on the person that, okay, this is a person's uh, way of life since I'm seeing him behaving in this way? Because I heard him mention that maybe character and what the person does, uh, you can equate it together. You can't separate them. I think so. so. But if in case I'm wrong, I stand to be corrected. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you can also mute your mic. I think some person's mic are on. I'm not talking. In Samson. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, what was said was that the African morality, which is the one that uh, ancient Egyptian anthropology stands for, is a morality of conduct, not of being. Okay, that you are who you are, or uh, you are who, what you do. What you do is what makes you who you are. So it's not a morality of judgment. Okay, this is the European con conception, the modern European conception, or the morality of being that everybody stresses, and morality of evaluation. Um, you know. Uh, the individual morality. So you see a moral issue and you try to evaluate and give judgment. No, the African morality is a morality of conduct. Now, in the little example you gave, though, which is not, is not too clear that you see someone today and that person is behaving like this. According to Karenga and uh, in the ancient Egypt, you are not to judge the person. The question is, how do you relate with that person you are seeing for the first time? It is your relationship, your conduct towards that person, not what that person is doing. Now, it is your conduct towards that person, which have to be good, be of good character, marching character, okay? Because it is that one that will reaffirm the worthiness of your individual since everything is centered, centered on doing so, that you're doing towards that person you just met that you don't have any antecedent about is obligatory for you because it is his right for you to act towards him. Okay. In, in, a, in reciprocating that, he or she in return, we also reciprocate by acting good towards you, which is his own right and his own <coughs> obligation. So when we say that conduct and, and um, being him, according to African morality is inseparable, they are not contradictions. We are mean that what you do makes you who you are and who you are also determines what you do towards your neighbor. Since the, Afri uh, the sociality of humans in the ancient Egyptian is relation relationship centered, is relationship centered. That is why the first part says, the relationality and practice. What you are relating to others, you have to put it into practice. You cannot relate without practicing. You can't act. You can't say you are relating to someone without acting. In you cannot just be. You cannot just mute. It's not the type of egoism that modern uh, European philosophy promotes of uh, isolation of. Um, uh, myopic view of uh, subjective thought and all that. It is individuality centered in uh, sociality, centered in personhood, centered in community. Okay, so I don't know if I answer your question. They are not contradictory, and it is not a moral philosophy or morality, African morality of judgment. It is morality of doing. You are to act well, so as you do that towards the other person, because it is obligatory for you to protect that person's right. His right is to receive good deeds, which you have to do. The same for that individual, that same person, have to act well to, to do good to you, which is his own right that he or she has obligation to protect and to promote. Thank you.
All right, thank you, Father, so much. Um, greatly enlightened. I understand now uh, what you mean by that. And with this, I think uh, all of us, as you said, we are obligatory to take care of one another. For if we take care of ourselves, if I, if I do you good, you do me good. And if we continue like that, the society will be good. Thank you so much. Good evening, Father. Good evening, ma'am. All right, I'm trying to process all this information. And sometimes these things can sound really confusing. So I've been thinking, you said that a person is what he is because of what he does. So what if someone does good things 70% of the time and then maybe 30% or 10% he does, I don't know, maybe seemingly inappropriate things. What is that person? So what if I do good, I think good, but then sometimes I do what is maybe what the society calls wrong or what the society would perceive as wrong. If I don't feel like I've done anything wrong, is that right? Or if I feel like I've done anything wrong, what you've said to me now is confusing me. I'm trying to process the whole thing. So maybe you can enlighten me a little bit more. Oh yes, of course. We are all enlightening, uh, enlightening ourselves and uh, Karenga is helping us to do that. We should not forget the frame of where we are, okay? We are relating and talking about the ancient Egyptians, how they live their humanity. Anthropology is the concept of the person in the way the person acts towards himself, the other, society, supreme being, the concept of the person towards religion, the concept of the person in the knowledge he has and all those things, everything that makes man, man, that is anthropology. So we are looking at it in the ancient Egyptian way. And in that, Karenga is helping us to present it, how these people lived it. Now, when we say again that you, this African morality, don't forget, like we have said in many places that Egypt is our cradle. So when we use African in this context also, we are not wrong to say uh, Egypt. African morality, like we said, is a morality of condor. That is, a person is what he is because of what he does. Mm. Now, like you said, I do 70% good. I do 30% uh, bad or what the society. That is the problem because in trying to grasp this now, which I understand, we try to evaluate it with the modern European concept of anthropology or morality that all of us, including myself, we have been brought up with, we have lived and we are living. We have not yet to see that I am a person existing based on what I have to do to who, to the other person. So it is not even a morality, like I said, answering to the previous one, of the one of judging whether I've done 70% right or 70% good. Now, does it mean that uh, the Egyptian, ancient Egyptians lived in the way they like without any moral principle? No, that's why we said Mahatian character, a character that is divine and human, a character that is a principle, a character that is the soul of what you are yourself. So if you live the Mahachan uh, character, you cannot but strive. Does it mean that every time you will do good in our own moral evaluation, the way we always give it, we have rules, we have duties to do and all that, we backslide in all these things. Does that mean we are not doing good? Okay, yes, but then at the same time, we are striving to, add, to, to reach that perfection. And that is why in the conclusion I gave that the Mahatian society was not just a simply human construct, but also participant. So that idea, participant in the uh, divine uh, relationship makes us to keep on striving because we are not just uh, doing things for human, whatever, we are striving 
to have that ideal moral act of my heart. Of course, I accept and I agree with you that it might look confusing why we are bringing in something that's a bit new, if not completely new to some of us, so for some of us completely new, that is conflicting with what we have been brought up with. And to unlearn that, it won't be easy. But the basic point is this anthropology is anthropology of society, sociability, where people socialize, relationship in practice, so that you cannot be who you are. You can't define yourself. You are defining yourself now. I don't know your name. You have to define yourself, not just with your name or whatever. You define yourself in relation to someone. And that is why we look back. You see you are in a family and the best and the complete family all of us belong to is the human family, the society, which these ones also creates and mold our moral uh, precepts that all of us all live by. Okay, but in a whole, it is the philosophy, the morality of doing, of acting, because we have it as obligation to the other and the other also as well to us. I don't know if I answer your question. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Uh, to add to what uh, Father Felix have just uh, rightly uh, explain beautifully well. I think if we go back to the lessons, you see, it's a journey in which we are entering into. It's a journey. And initially we talked about the general notion of my heart, what my heart, because at the end, the basis and the, the foundation of everything we are talking about today is on my heart. That has the principle of what truth, justice, and what now, motion of my heart, the notion of anthropology. We looked at the divine image of humans. We talked about the human being is created in the image of God. We talked about also the perfectibility. That image of God, for you to get there, you have to strive. That's why we talk about striving towards the good, towards being like God. That is where perfectibility comes in, that each day, each moment that you strive to be like God, at that moment, you are being perfect. You are, you are, you are moving towards the ultimate good, which is God, in our own balance. Now, from there, we talked about for you to be perfect, you have to be teachable. That is the teachability of the human person. You have to be teachable for you to learn to be perfect. And now we talked about the free will. Oh, free will. Now, once you are being, you are, you are teachable, you are being taught how to exercise freedom. And after that, you go into the sociality, which Father Felix is talking about now. Your free will, it is tested in your relationship with what? The other person. It's tested in your relationship with God. And for sure, if you are guided by the principles of math, for sure, you will not be having a problem whether you did 70% good or 70 because that will not even exist in the first place. Your notion, your ideology, your perception will not be whether did I do good or bad. No. Like what Father Felix said, we are making this distinction because of what we are brought up with the understanding for which we are brought up with. This modern and European understanding of anthropology. So it, this is a different perspective, it's a different paradigm. And as he, Father rightly said, it will be difficult for us to just immediately pull ourselves out of it. To be difficult, but notwithstanding, it is there for us to venture into. And that is what we are trying to do here. So um, this is just a little contribution I wanted to give in. Now we have a Folanya Francis Shergun. The mic is yours. Okay, thank you, Father, so much. Thank you very much for the, um, uh, a very well uh, presented uh, knowledge past. But I have a question. Maybe this could also help us 
to subsequently uh, diminish or demolish this judgmental morality which we have been uh, groomed with. Now, I am so much interested in this other part of the Egyptian ways of controlling anomalies, because we cannot deny the fact that during those times when the Martian uh, morality were being practiced, some persons had to struggle with addictions, or should I say, they are incapable of their, their, their rationality, which could have led to some kind of uh, disagreement with their ways or levels of making decisions in accordance to the Martian uh, practices. So I, I'm so much interested in this. I wanted to know how the Egyptians were coping with this. How did they manage to cope with this? With people who are struggling with, okay, you mentioned something about struggling, but in a case when it has become addiction or in a case where the person lacks the ability to control this anormality, how were they able to do that? Because judging by these Martian practices, and since it's not judgmental, then how do they go up? about all the anomalies, of course, they must have experienced them also in the society. Thank you, Francis. Uh, beautiful question that uh, a lot of us have to think about. Now, with my knowledge about the book read and this aspect, do not really uh, talk about that explicitly, like I said, this is an anthropo, every anthropology is a question of ontology and theology. Ontology because of existence, the being and who you are, and theology because man is always in relationship with the supreme being. And like Father contributed, and I stated also in the introduction, you know, get, taking us back to what, what we have done so far, that the first thing is man is uh, created in that image of God, okay? That Imago Dei also. Now, the conception, of course, is different from um, you know, other religion and uh, uh, cultures. Uh, and that is why the last co uh, lecture we have, we also bring that notion of African, uh, the notion of African creation, uh, or creation in African sense, in, uh, if we can put it that way. Let me see, I want to say it the best way. Okay, the African notion of creation, okay, would be the last one. Now to your question, how were the ancient Egyptians able to cope, able to uh, reduce and maybe possibly eradicate anomalies in their, uh, in their society? Um, sure, we still go back to living by my heart, you know, disciplining supported individual's discipline, supported by community or communitarian love and expression of humanity. Now, these are my words. This is what I understand. Like we say, no society can just be with that. We know free will will be misused. Free will will not be seen as responsibility with that. Some will say free will as ability to do what I want to, to express and do and not about choosing the highest good. For the ancient Egyptian, and like we know, freedom, which is an act of free will, is that act of choosing the highest good. And for the ancient Egyptian, the highest good is in this moral principle of my heart, justice, love, and all these things. So you must be able to speak love. So how were they able to cope in justices, for instance? It's the, you know, the societal love and the individual of striving to be able to know that may, same concept, to see how you are able to develop uh, yourself in it. Now, are there set of rules put in place? Will there be other things they, they do? There is still other parts to this, uh, this uh, section, which is life affirming anthropology. And I will ask you to tune on and to wait, which will be in the next two weeks, 29th of March, where we complete this uh, sociability of humans, which also completes 
the chapter six on Martian anthropology, life affirming anthropology. Some answers will be there. And also further researches will be made to your questions. And I think everyone also is a very legitimate question, uh, question rather. So I don't know if it is well answered, but to my knowledge, what I read, that's how I could answer it. But the next uh, part will surely do some uh, uh, justice to that. And the last uh, talk of uh, this year's uh, uh, SPS, the African notion of creation, we also answer that with other scholars' contribution as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Fire. Thank you so much. Right, right. If there are no other questions and clarifications to be made, I want to uh, already start thanking uh, uh, Father Felix for this wonderful and well taught presentation made today on the sociability of humans from the Martian anthropology, anthropology uh, perspective. And uh, as we, as I always say, always that this is how our forefathers, our brothers and sisters, our grandfathers, mommy and daddies, the way they live their lives, the way they, it's quite unfortunate to know that we are so, so, so much far away from this perspective, from this understanding, and all of that. But that is the whole purpose for the Correct Connect Africa Foundation where we have Ankofa as our philosophy, that is going back to retrieve what you have left behind. These are the things that we have left behind and uh, we are going back to retrieve them. Yeah, we have something from uh, Israel uh, saying that uh, I really would have loved to ask a question, but I'm in a very noisy environment, nevertheless, I will probably leave my question on the WhatsApp platform. You can just put it here, you can write it here. I think we can have, I mean, I think Father Felix is uh, available to respond to it. Uh, now, before we all move, you can write the question here uh, on this particular platform, on the chat platform, so that uh, we all can read it and Father Felix can give a thought on it. And if it's something that uh, others can contribute to, we will just do that. So, Israel, you can just write your question on this platform. While I continue uh, 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 admonishing us on this uh, particular the need to take seriously this, what we are doing. It's, it's very important to know who you are. It's very important to have a grasp of your identity because it is everything. It's everything. When we talk about going back to your roots, Sankofa and all of that, we are not saying, oh, go back and remain there. <laughs> Some people will ask, but Father, I, I will go back to where? Go back to where? No, we're not saying go back to remain there. We are saying go back to take, to retrieve what you have left there. This is like what we are doing today, the Martin anthropology. If Karenga had not gone back to retrieve it, both of you, the, the, we that we are here today, talking about this, will not have it. Some people had to make that sacrifice to go and study, study Egyptology and everything, study the language to come up with what we are studying with today. And there is, we have thousands and millions of concepts formulated, created, developed by our ancestors. And you know, the funniest thing is that 
when the white man comes, get these notions, get this concept, use it, take it over to his place, refurbish it, and brings it back, we will all like it and we will embrace it. But for us to do the job by ourselves, even when somebody is even doing it, we are castigating the person, we are bringing the person down, we are doing all sorts of things to even discourage the person. So this is, this is a food for thought for us, as I'm saying all of this because I'm waiting for uh, Mr. Israel to, to write this question so that uh, we can answer it before we go. Uh, before we go. Uh, I'm, that's why I'm using my time to, to say all of this. Uh, we should, we should, we should, this is who we are. I'm sorry, I did philosophy, but I didn't have the, the, the opportunity to go in depth in what I'm doing today. I did not. If I had, if I had that time of philosophy, had that opportunity, maybe I would have even been more than what I am today now. So, my dear ones, especially the younger ones who are here with us, uh, following this uh, these courses and all of that, this is an opportunity. It's, in fact, it's an opportunity. This will make you think differently when you go out for your apostolate. When you go out to do whatever you are doing, you are looking at life in a different manner, not just one way that all of us have been taught. You are looking at it also in a different manner, not just in a different manner, in the manner in which you and your ancestors have been brought up. So it makes more meaning. It makes more meaning. So we are still waiting for you. Okay, yeah. Mr. Israel has just dropped the question. It says, is the judgment of good and or bad drawn from the Martin ideals, laws of Moses or societal laws? Okay, uh, Mr. Israel, thank you for that question. Uh, but like I said, I will just stay have to like repeat myself. The, the anthropology that my heart stresses is to be lived. It's a con is is a, a anthropology of action. So judgment does not precede that. When the law of Moses, you've already, uh, you know, I won't say stereotype, but you already framed it like delimited. You've put a kind of limitation where it has to be. We are talking about morality of persons, of society. Hey, society, Moses lived in, society, in the society. Uh, you know, societal laws are not there. The, the main um, moral evaluator are the humans. And the indication for the evaluation is what you do. See yourself as obligatory um, actor in the action or towards the other person that has rights. First, accepting that all those who are in the society have rights, including myself, including yourself. Now, these rights are to be protected, are to be uh, helped, are to be, uh, you know, lived by others to, to uh, as a way of obligation. And like I said, I now, for instance, my own is just to do my best according to Martian principle in the ancient Egypt, which is to do best towards you, to do the good towards you and not to according to one uh, law that is written. We can say this one now, maybe law in nature, but law in nature is because you are made of good. The Mago, the, the, the image of the person that we first talked in, about in the, uh, in the first chapter. So it's not a morality of judgment. That is the first thing we have to first remove. Like judging moral act, you are not to judge whether something is good or bad, you are not, that should not be your motive. You just act and act well, so well, very good, best in your own conduct, according to Martian principle. And uh, your act is 
I am obligated, I have obligation towards the other, to help the other, to protect the other's right. The same like that. That is what you are to act of. Not to judge whether the other is acting this way, good or bad, whether from duty, whatever, or from legal or from some other ethical, ethical theories or, or limitations. Okay. So what we are talking about is the morality of action, of deeds, not morality of judgment. If we understand that, I think uh, it could help a bit. Thank you, Mr. Israel. <clears throat> Do, does anybody want to contribute to that? Uh, also, also to add to that, when we're talking about math, we're talking about order. And the opposite of that is what is fit or as fit, which is injustice, which is chaos, which is disorder, violence. So which means that for them, for the ancient Egyptians to be even be talking about good or to do well, means that <laughs> definitely there are people who behave wrongly. So when we're talking about morality, even, even the Martian rule, we're talking about ideals, ideals, like this is where we should reach. This is what should. So now for the ancient Egyptians, they were not just ideals that were not reachable. It was actually what governed the city, what governed politics, what governed religion, what governed social life, like what Father Felix had just presented. It was what governed the society and everything that was in it the math. But if you go beyond or not beyond that, if you go against that, it is called disorder. Now the question when Father Felix was trying to answer, the question that came to my mind was like, why, why did they talk about order? Why was it necessary for them to have order? What they might also call the good. Why was it necessary? I think I'm not going to answer that question. I think I will leave that to each and every one of us to think about it, actually. Why? Why do they have to go through these whole hurdles to reflect, to think, and come up with this understanding of even the math? Because it is also the human beings. It was human beings that also came up with these ideas. They didn't fall down from heaven. You get. So the question is, why? In all of this that we've been presenting, that we've been trying to articulate to understand and all of that, we should be able to understand, at least come up with something. Why? Why math? Why truth? Why justice? Why balance? How did they come to that? Because definitely there's a history behind that. Why did, they, why did they feel that these three principles can create goodness, can create balance, can create the best way of living? I will leave that with you. So uh, if there are no other <laughs> questions, I uh, would like to call it today. I want to thank again, uh, Father Felix for this wonderful presentation and preparation made and uh, all of us who have uh, participated in this uh, in this lecture definitely we have learned one or two things and we're going to think about it we're going to sleep well and all of that so thank you and we hope to see again on the 29th of march 29th of March. So see you guys on the 29th of March, where we'll go back to the same, the sociality of humans, but the second part. So thank you very much, uh, Father Felix, and thank you, everyone who uh, have participated uh, in this lecture. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Good night.